For those who don't know, the Republic of Mauritius is right here. Our country is defined as water scarce and right now we are facing one of the worst droughts since the late 90s, with our reservoirs filled at only 31% of their capacities. Ironic that you can be simultaneously surrounded with water and yet lacking of it. One, while one can argue that desalination is our way out, post implementation has shown that we, l we lack the resources and skills to do so. We are not policymakers, and hence our goal was to try and find a cheap alternate based on existing infrastructure. While our counterparts in Rodrigues have been implementing rainwater harvesting for decades now, but that comes with a significant loss in sanitation. To reduce this, we are proposing a solution using solar water heaters, which is a common side in motion households due to our tropical climate. Coastal regions are well known for their scarcity of fresh water. To address this issue, some counties have the desalination plants based on desalination systems. Unfortunately, this operation is expensive and energy intensive. That is why countries such as Saudi Arabia which has one of the world's largest desalination plants in the world, uses solar panels as a power source in conjunction with reverse osmosis to solve this energy problem and to reduce operational costs. Membrane distillation, whose technologies have been developed by China, USA, and Japan, is also employed for desalination purposes and wastewater treatment over reverse osmosis due to their lower cost. However, it is still sensible to thermal energy losses. Tinkercad was used to model this very system. Most people in Mauritius and Rodrigues Island have solar water heaters on their roofs and the latter's are flat. Rainwater from the roof is collected in the rainwater harvester located on the ground through a drainage system. Therefore, we propose adding a swirl tank at the rainwater harvester's exit to separate solid waste by centrifugal force. The filtered water is stored in another tank besides it. Then the water pump moves the fluid to the water heater on the roof. According to our calculations, a 150 litre solar water tank, which is the smallest model available on the market, requires more energy than the sun can provide on a normal day. We decided to fill the solar water heater with only 100 litres and it will take at least 5 hours of direct sunlight to evaporate, assuming there is no heat energy loss to the surrounding. The gas evaporates and it travels through the tubing towards the condenser where it is cooled to produce distilled water. We needed a way to control the water flow and the functions of the solar water heater. We use an ESP32 as the brain of the system where all the valves, sensors and relays are connected to it. The solar water heater is in the distiller mode, these valves are closed and the pump is turned on every 15 to 20 minutes. The rainwater in the tank now acts as a cooling medium to condense the water vapor to a liquid state. After condensation, this valve is opened to collect it in the tank. Now, if all the rainwater is used up, but it is still in the distillation process, the fan is turned on to cool it and condense the water by air. However, there is still one inconvenience. If the solar water heater is in distiller mode and the user wants to use hot water, the entire process needs to be stopped completely beforehand. The user needs to notify the control system at least one hour before the hot water will be used. To facilitate this process, we use the capability of the ESP32 to connect to the internet and used it as an IoT device to control all the valves and the relays through the online dashboard. When this situation occurs, the microcontroller will open this valve to discharge the rainwater and stop the process. Then, these two valves are opened to let the fresh water in to heat it and during the night, the solar water heater is in the heater mode. These processes are repeated until all the rainwater is purified. In drug rigs, rainwater should not be used for drinking purposes without prior treatment. As a result, our team coming from both Mauritius and Rodri came in together to design our solution. Targeting SDG 3, 6, 12 and 13, our solution aimed to provide more continuous and reliable access to clean drinking water even during severe seasonal variation in precipitation. The overall estimated cost of the project is only $300. We aim to raise funds from both governments and private organizations. Furthermore, we would like to pilot test our technology in companies all across the country. The government may also be involved in ensuring the system long-term success by providing educational programs that help users maintain the system, as well as the proper water saving practices. Using this technology, we hope to build a more resilient future.